And if I could move to Rafiq Bengali, who is the general manager of the United Bank of Africa, and ask you, Rafiq, what challenges um, does your institution encounter um, with its African expansion? And, and what's your view on partnerships that your institution would like to see to really address the bottlenecks um, that are thwarting cross-border banking and integration, and also as it relates, if it's relevant, to, um, to agribusiness. Thanks. Thank you. Um, thank you for having me here. Uh, I wanted to first pass on my CEO's regret that he's not here today making the presentation himself. Uh, so I'll speak from the corporate point of view. The regulatory, they, they aren't only just regulatory challenges, they're regulatory and economic challenges. And sometimes, you know, the two are intertwined. The regulatory bottlenecks that we face, the significant delays in obtaining licenses in the different countries, uh, brownfield acquisitions, uh, they, you know, difficulties in obtaining brownfield acquisition, that's why longer gestation routes of organic growth need to be taken. Uh, lack of harmonization of banking regulations, complexity of multiple jurisdiction, uh, deficit in infrastructure when you look across different African countries. It's not, you know, not all the same, but uh, uh, different, different countries have different stages of the infrastructure development. Uh, when you talk about uh, if the infrastructure is not there, it is a, you have an increased cost of uh, sourcing even power. Inadequate roads and railway links are detrimental as far as you know expanding your operations. Uh, managing different time zone languages, you know we need to cent you know we need to centralize for e economies of scale. Uh, we have cultural differences. Uh, you need a sophisticated HCM, you know, uh, human capital management uh, for employee productivity to bring them and, and, and close the knowledge gap. Uh, ability to optimize returns is a difficult s skill shortages uh, in, in the various countries. Uh, specifically, if you have to fill uh, subsidiaries with local employees. Uh, secondment of employees is difficult across some of the borders. Uh, absence of market structures, credit bureaus, credit history, uh, challenges, you know, is very challenging. Uh, now, the next, the next thing you look at, the economic growth, you know, the, the plunge in commodity prices has uh, weakened fiscal revenue, uh, and then if Exchange rates, devaluation that, is, that, that has happened, uh, slower foreign uh, investment coming into the country, FX receipts, fragile external reserves. Now, I'm talking about ac across Africa. If you look at Nigeria and Ga Ghana, the, the currencies were effectively devalued. Uh, and at the same time, regulators start increasing interest rates or in start increasing uh, reserve requirement. Those are challenges that you know that you face. Uh, you know that Nigeria monetary policy rate is 13 percent. Cash res reserve requirement is now 31 percent for 75 and and 25 before, depending on what kind of deposits you had. The f foreign currency borrowing that the bank were allowed to have up to 200 percent has been dropped to 75 percent. Open trading positions are are, are cut. Uh, even in other African markets, you know, Ghana, the MPR is 22% plus uh, there's a depreciation of the city. In Kenya, the MPR is up to 11.5%, uh, though the rest of the Francophone West Africa is relatively stable, right? So it's, when you talk about, you know, partnerships and developing partnerships, it's more than just with African banking regulators, you know. They need to be, of course, harmonization of policy, regulation, cross-border banking. But then we talk about sharing infrastructure between banks. Now, I'm not talking about infrastructure of roads uh, and railways, but uh, banks need to start sharing. Like SWIFT is a utility that is being used by all banks around the world. 
you need to start building structures for you know, uh, KYC, which is know your customer compliance repository, and you might want to have a utility. So banks can start also working together in forming partnership you know, to overcome those challenges. Uh, partnership with government agency, public-private partnership to address the infrastructure deficit. How do we finance infrastructure? Um, it's very difficult under the new um, Basel, regu you know, two and three, uh, to do long-term financing in countries outside of OECD. Right. So how do we tackle that? You know, uh, uh, where do we find the partners who have the long-term money? Be it uh, insurance companies, be it. Uh, um, people who manage uh, pensions, you know, we need, you know, so there, there has to be a lot more partnership over there. Uh, how do we close the power gap? You know, the shortage of power all over. Uh, when you talk about infrastructure, uh, one third of Africans are living in rural areas close to an all seasons roads, whereas uh, versus two thirds in other developing nations. So, you know, you are like at half the point. So a lot has to happen over there. Um, how can our institution play a role as far as agriculture is concerned? I think agriculture, uh, UBA, in all the geographic areas it is, uh, has committed to agriculture. And in Nigeria specifically, we have, uh, if you look at a portfolio, uh, total portfolio, we have about 3% of our total portfolio investment in agriculture, you know, and that, uh, that, that, that is among the largest among the banks in the area. So. Uh, the, the other partnerships, we do have partnership with AFDB, FXXM, AFC, Ministry of Finance, Central Bank, you know, uh, to move forward when you talked about the SDG initiatives, all right? And obviously, besides the bank itself, our chairman, Tony Elamalu, his foundation is very much involved in some of the other matters when it comes to the SDG goals, be it uh, about women. I mean, SDG goals, uh, we talk about six pillars uh. is good business because we're going to develop markets so that was very helpful doing business in africa you can't afford to be without africa investor